2008 Toyota Tundra front wheel bearings. First thing, most important part of the job is make sure that your truck is lifted safely. Out, you know, I'm on a lift, but make sure you got it jacked up right or whatever you got to do. Don't need to lose a limb or your life over something stupid like doing a wheel bearing. So get your wheel off. It's a 22 millimeter socket. Um, we're going to be doing this wheel bearing right here. First thing we want to do is uh, take a, a flathead or maybe like some kind of um, driver you have and you're going to pop this black cap off. I hit I hit the top of this with a hammer and that it'll wedge it between the, uh, the two uh, edges and you can pop this out. This is the hammer I use. I have trouble with like a regular hammer because it it's not powerful enough. Basically you just tap this in here. Um, as you can see these bend easy so you try not to bend it. Try to just to be able to pop it out. Uh, you want to go all the way around. This one just <laughs> it just bent on me, so I'm just going to pop it out. I got a new one anyway, but if you don't have a new one, try your best not to uh, damage this because you're going to need to put it back in. Um, so as you see, this is the axle nut with the cotter pin and the crown. Uh, we're going to take some needle nose or some dikes and uh, just get this cotter pin out. You want to just straighten it out and then pull it through the other side um, using dikes is good to pull it out the other side all right you go ahead and just pull this out okay all right and these can be kind of stubborn sometimes you just got to work with it once you get this cotter pin out we're going to take this uh crown off this just slides right off it's not a big deal at all uh save these and then this is the axle nut this is a, a 29 millimeter triple crown socket not a common socket here's what it looks like um but yeah 29 and uh, i'm sorry 39 39 millimeter this goes on here and we're just going to take this off you could probably do it with like a big uh, breaker bar i'm using an impact gun but um it's, you don't know you, should, you could probably do it if you got a little muscle without an impact gun so we'll go ahead and take this off save this all right now we're going to take this caliper off now I'm going to try to sneak, do a sneaky way and keep all the brake pads together. I'm just going to take the back caliper bolts off and slide this off and let it and uh, hang it up with a hanger. So I'm going to take this 17 millimeter off, this 12 millimeter off, and then the 17 millimeter on the bottom. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these off and then slide this whole assembly off and hang it. I'll show you what I mean. You could take all the brakes apart if you want. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing it to save time. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that. I'll show you what I mean. And be careful with this metal brake line because these can come loosened and leak brake fluid. Um, I already know I'm going to get comments about, you know, I should just take the whole brake thing apart and blah, blah, blah. But I've done quite a few of these, so uh, I know how to do it. So take that 12 millimeter off for the uh, brake line guide. Let's do the 17 millimeter uh, caliper bracket bolt. Here's a hanger. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just, we're going to hang this. Uh, the, the coil springs are, are strong. They can hold this caliper no problem. Um, you're going to have to remove it to be uh, to get to this wheel bearing. But um, when you do, that's a 17 millimeter. Just be extra careful because, like I said, it has a steel brake line. And unlike like a passenger car, these steel brake lines can kink and bend. So just try not to bend anything. You know, as, Here's my pads. It's all together. And I got it hanging out the way. It, it'll be fine there until ready to go back on. Everything's supported. Nothing's stretching or kinked or bent. Everything's good. Okay, so now with that handled, we're going to take this rotor off. This should slide off. It should slide off no problem. Okay, so now um, get yourself a 17 millimeter because we're going to take these uh, bolts out. These are for the wheel bearing. I guess the hub assembly bolts. There's four of them. Two on the top, two on the bottom. Uh, 17 millimeter. Don't get your wrench stuck in here as these bolts back up. Um, you should have just enough room to get them loose, and then you can pull your wrench out. If you have an open end wrench, it's a, you don't have to worry, really worry about that. But I got a closed end wrench, so I just got to be a little cautious of that. But once you get them a little loose, you could just use your fingers pretty much, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, there's even like little spots that are uh, you got more room to pull these bolts out. You know, as it backs up. Um, you could just kind of move this to get more room. Um, once you get all these out, um, you'll you, you should be able to pull it off, and this this uh, dust shield will come. But first, you gotta hit the uh, 
you got to hit this axle with a soft rubber hammer a little bit just to get it kind of the splines loose so you can pull this thing off I usually just bump this until uh, until it starts looking kind of like it's bouncing back and forth once it does that the splines are loose and you can just pull this guy right off I'm gonna do it with two hands like I said that dust shield will move too all right so the dust shield should come off and this will come off and um, you know take note how this is set because you need to put it on the exact same way and also take note there's a there's like an o-ring in here you need to pull this out because we're going to uh, put a new one in this just pulls out shouldn't be a big deal at all then now there's also an extra um, seal in there that usually comes with the wheel bearings uh, assembly it's in it's like in there I'm not going to pop it out because mine's fine um, you could replace it if you want I'll show you what I mean when we look at the part but I'm not replacing it um, anyways this uh, is kind of dirty you could clean it up if you want if yours is rusty you know if there's like excessive rust you might want to clean it up I just kind of did like a quick little thing and then I wiped in here to get this nice clean surface so I got a doorman bearing doorman's not bad uh, it comes with a cutter pin an o-ring and this uh, seal this is what I was telling you about I'm not replacing that and then uh, the bearing assembly it comes with bolts pre-installed uh, it's just, you know, bolt on, just bolts right on, and, and then it's good to go. Uh, thank you, Toyota, for making it that simple. So, we're going to take this O-ring, and we're going to put it on the back here, right here. It goes on there. And then we're going to put this on, and uh, what you want to do is you want to get your dust shield lined up correctly. And then you want to get these, um, these bolts started, hand threaded. Just kind of start them all. And a quick note... Your dust shield should have this sticker on, on the back, like pointing towards the engine. Um, get it exactly how it was. And uh, we're just going to hand thread these in. Got my 17 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. Um, I'm sorry I don't have a torque spec for you, but I don't even know if you can get a torque wrench in there. I just get it pretty, pretty tight. Um, yep, so that's in there I painted my axle nut and I put anti-seize on my spindle right here and um, I'm going to put this on and uh, just run this down I'll put the uh, torque spec for this in the uh, description okay so that's nice and tight and then in the back it looks everything looks fine and normal nothing's crooked or cockeyed um, I'm going to put this crown on here on the nut and then put the new cotter pin it's important to use a new cotter pin, they always recommend it. Uh, you know, it could be dangerous if you have an old cotter pin and it breaks. So get that in there, and then you just bend one side of it to prevent this uh, crown and axle nut from ever moving if it were ever come loose. Alright, so we got that on there. And uh, we're going to put our, our cap on now, the one that we popped off. I got a new one. I got this from Toyota. Here's my part number. And uh, just pop this in with a, uh, a rubber hammer very gently. You could probably use something else if you just do it real gently too. And uh, that's about it, guys. I'm going to get this in. Hopefully, you should be good from here. You should be able to just put your rotor and brake caliper back on. If you got this far, you're good. And uh, I know I talk fast, but this is kind of like a quick tutorial type of deal. And uh, good luck. Any questions or information in the comments is appreciated.